Gun trash stunk up. Yeah, you know that's us. Where we only speak the real and the real rock with us. Where we motivate the people and the politic on success. Oh no, we ain't DJ Kelly, but they swear we the best. Gun trash. What's happening? It's Contrast Uncut. It's season four, episode 34. I want to give a big shout out to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. It's your host, Zylo, aka DJ Wine Dollars, like I won some money. <laughs> Today, ladies and gentlemen, we got a really incredibly dope special guest. You know, he's from the city of Stockton, California. NorCal, you understand me? He's half of the three times Grammy nominated, Rhea certified, multi platinum gold, Billboard charting production, duo hallways production. He's a true musician that can literally play almost every instrument, a mixing and mastering engineer, producer, rapper, and songwriter. As a producer, along with Teak, has worked with the likes of Ice Cube, Dub C, Mindless Behavior, E40, Let Us See, just to name a small few. I mean, the list goes on and on. They have had syncs and licenses in film and TV from huge commercials to box office films. As a musician, he has traveled and toured after tour after tour, worked with the likes of Tanaje to Brandy to Fifth Harmony, just to name a few. I mean, this brother keeps on working. Him and his brother put in so much work that, you know, when you look at the definition of work ethic, you should see Hallway Productions because these brothers just spread themselves out in every aspect when it comes to this music. And he's had so many different things under his belt. He just dropped his third solo project, The Definition. And I mean, the work ethic second to none. And if you don't know who I got on the show by now, it's all good. We got all episode to chop it up with, you know, from Hallway Production Duo, D. Dejan Underwood. How you doing, brother? Underdo, man. Underdo, man. Underdo. Now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, let me get that right. Underdo. Underdo. What's good with you, man? Shit, bro, I'm blessed, bro. Blessed we in the city of Stockton. You know, learn about the rich history in this motherfucker and just so many different accolades come from this city. You know, a lot of people, it is like a little murder capital city at the same time. You can't, you can't not acknowledge the fact that it do go down here. Man, you can't sleep. <laughs> come on, come on. You gotta keep your head on the swivel. That left and right, but you know, at the same time, you do got that downtown old school vibe that makes you feel like it's comfortable here. It gives you that vibe like I can raise my family here. I can show them from, you know, this is from struggle to growth to now I'm showing other people how I got there. And this city gives you that vibe like, you know, this is a good place to flourish at. And I mean, there's been so many incredible people from this city, including Hallway Productions, you know, from the Diaz brothers to the NFL stars, the Brandon Cooks. To, you know, just so many different people. It's just, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, Stockton got, it's some of everything out here. I mean, especially when it comes to sports and music. It's, it's, it's you know, that that's really what a, a, a lot of the notoriety and talent comes from. It mm -hmm. was either, you was, you was either in the streets or you was playing sports and music. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's basically what it was when we was coming up. So you had your, you know, you had your choice, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, well, I'm not going to say a lot. Some people took the street route, you know, and then others, I mean, a lot, a lot of them is, was talented, you know, they was in the streets, but they were some hell of a ball player, you know what mm. I'm saying? Or, you know, they did music also. And, you know, it's just some of them took the, went left, some went right and as you focused on your tunnel vision, because, you know, your, vintage, your vision has brought you so much along with your brother and, you know, the accolades of success is astronomical. And, you know, to keep this vibe back in this city, you know, I'm pretty sure you could be in the Bay or you could be in L.A., you could be in Atlanta, New York, but you chose to come back here. And that's something that, you know, from the very beginning, I want to make sure, you know, people understand the value. If you keep your roots at home, people get to see the flower as it blooms. Definitely. I mean, that, that was one thing I always uh, was taught. Like, my mom used to always tell us, man, like, never forget where you came from. Like, and to us, this is how we keep ourselves grounded. Like, we had millionaires, like, wanting to buy us houses, 
you know, fully loaded studios in L.A., you know, whatever we wanted, turn all that nuts down. Mm. It's like, you know, they're like, why do you want to stay where you're at? I'm like, man, that's home. <laughs> like, there's nothing out there. Like, it's home. That's right. I was like, you know, I told them, like, you know, it's a lot of people that we know that did things in music, moved to L.A. and moved out of town, never came back, and then they stopped claiming the city. They start claiming wherever they live at now. It's like, nah, bro, like that that's that's not us. That'll never be us. Where's the value in that? <laughs> that man, <laughs> there is none. <laughs> come on. Come on. So D, brother, I gotta let you know from the jump, time's the most finite thing we have on this earth. So I appreciate you fucking with me, fucking with the viewers and the listeners. Thank you, brother. I mean, you know, it's all love, man. I mean, it, it took a while, but we here, man. We come here, on, man. Come on. It's just, you know, the, the, the planets have to line and, you know, the timing. And, hey, it, it was the right time today, man. Shoot, come on, come on. It was, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm going to keep it real. It was a feeling, feeling. <laughs> and, you know, it just so happens how many times you can get a three times Grammy nominated, billboard charting, Rhea certified producer on call to be able to show up for, for the show. That's that's something that's humble. That's that's. That is the stars aligning. That's, you know, oh, I am available. Pop up. And boom, we in the new studio. It's yep, a lot yep. to be excited about. So, you know, what's the normal 24 hours for you? Normal 24, man. I, man, you know, being in my wife wake me up at like 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. No, she, man, she, she get up for work hecka early. But I'm, I like, I, I work too, so. Like, I get off work at, you know, a little after midnight. I don't get home till 1. She wake up at 3 something. So, from there, I don't go back to sleep until like 5 in the morning. I get up, come straight here, probably around 9 o'clock in the morning. And then I'm here from 9 in the morning till about 4 in the you know afternoon or evening. And same thing. We just, you know. Cycle repeats. Yeah, it's, man, nonstop. Like, I stay busy. Uh. <laughs> Facts, facts. I put her when you hit me, I was like, hey, I went home all right. Hey, what's up? No, nope, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't realize it. Yeah. See you tomorrow. <laughs> She'll see the interview and understand. Oh man. She already knew. She knows it's all love though. She know I I mean, she knows she's getting into, man. I, I was busy when we got together. She understood. Like she know where I'm at, so it don't matter. <laughs> I be having to remind my wife that sometimes. Like, you know, when we was first talking, you knew I was doing this. <laughs> I decided to go do a regular job just because it was good and, you know, I thought I could do this, but... Hey, I mean, it's hard, though. I mean, it... it Bruh, America's it, it ain't, a it ain't, job. It, it, it ain't easy, man. People people think it's easy. Nah, man, because it's like, when you busy, music take a lot. Come and on. it's actually not just music, just anything that you're dedicated to takes time. Right. And so it's like... Trying to balance all that, man, it it, it it bumpy. But at the end of the day, if, if they support your vision and they and they really behind you, they understand. It it it'll get bumpy, but they understand. They know what they're getting into. So come on, come if on. they got your back, then it's gonna work out. You know, <laughs> the entertainment industry, if people don't know, is the only industry where you gotta be patient, 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 patient. And as soon as they press play on what you're trying to do, you gotta be prepared and ready to do it at that moment. Oh, you yeah. fucked up. That's on you. That's yeah, on you. Man. That's you thinking about, you know what, the next time I get this, if the world works back and everything aligns back and I get back to it, Lord willing, manifestation, and it comes back to me, be more ready. Hey, you know what's crazy? We had, I got a, a story. So when we, uh, the first time Q flew us out there to L.A. to work with him, you know, it was, you know, he wanted us, he wanted us to come in his facility, you know, in his atmosphere and produce on the spot. Mm. And so... You know, he already knew, like, we got our own stuff at, you know, at home. We, we do our thing, boom, send it off. But he's just like, nah, like, see what y'all made of. Because he's like, you know, we can put niggas in the studio and they done choked. <laughs> and he's like, up. that was the end of that. Uh. So he's just like, you know, we gonna, we gonna, you know, put y'all up and see what y'all made of. Came in, brought our stuff, banged some stuff out. He's just like. Y'all real. Them niggas is, yeah, they, hey. <laughs> I like y'all. We're going to do some good business together. I, I'm, I'm going to keep y'all around. <laughs> That's right. But, hey, it's one of them things. He's, like, he literally told us, like, man, I done watch niggas fumble the ball, get starstruck, and just fuck up. And that was that next. <laughs> right. And that's, just, yeah, that's how the industry is. It's cutthroat. Period. Period. 
And shit, when you fall off and you fumble, you got to work 10 times harder just to get back in the game. Mm -hmm. And it may not be that same team, that same player that you're working with. It may be back to ground zero. You build it back with everything. But you know what? The whole idea is you got to stay in the game. You got to keep playing. Because yep. at the moment you're not playing, you're thinking about it. You, you're putting pressure on yourself for what you're not doing. I mean, then at, at the same time, man, it's like, you know, stars is born every day. So what you lacking on, there's always a replacement. So That's... people people always think like, man, you can't be, I can't be replaced. Nah, bro, everybody can be replaced. I mean, your, your five minutes of fame, you know, it's, you either going to get it or you're not going to get it. Man, if you pass up seconds. on it, this next person, he may not be as talented, but if he on his grizzle, he going to get your spot. Yeah. You have your energy, your vibe, and then that time, you be like, damn, how come this brother's with been there for 10, 15 years and he just he like the rest of us? Or it, or they look at it and be like, man, how does whack-ass nigga get on? <laughs> you know, I'm going to keep it 100. It'd be a lot of whack niggas. Hey, but for real, they'd be like, man, how does whack nigga on? This nigga with all the talent. He's hungry. And he's loyal. This dude got the hunger and he's willing to learn. He may not, it's not always the most talented people. It's the ones that have that hunger and that's willing to step out on that limb. Facts. The ones with the talent, half the time, be the ones with the big ass egos. You can't tell them nothing. Like, man, you just get this nigga out of here, man. It, we could work with him. He going to get us the bag because he going to listen. This nigga, you can't talk to him. So, Facts. next. <laughs> come on. Come on. Let's fast forward. It's not even uh, nothing. So, I got a quote, brother, and I feel like everything we just spoke about segue into my quote without even us trying to bring it up. But it's like how I break the ice, you feel me? So, you know, let me know how this quote relates to you or if it doesn't. But like I said, we already talking about it. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. Les Brown. That's pretty, uh... <laughs> Man, I mean... At the end of the day, man, you gotta be a go getter, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there, man. If you believe in something and it's, and you really want, if and you really want it bad enough, you are gonna go and get it. Facts. I mean, you. Facts. That's that's like you know how they say like you, you can't live in yesterday. So, you know you, you can't live in the past. Come on, you can't cry over spilled milk. Exactly. You're you're not gonna flourish and you're not going to elevate. Come on, you spent that money in the club the other day. You dropped that 300 at the weed shop. Hey, you said And that was your like, rent money. Oh, you tap, tapping that pocket. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just one of the things. Like, you got you got to elevate. If you want it bad enough, you're you going to go get it. You, and you're going to do, you're going to take the necessary steps. You know, what's not in this text that in between the lines is there's sacrifice. There's understanding of what you got to yeah, prioritize, exactly. compartmentalize, and, you know, make that understanding that. I'm not going to be afraid of success. Mm -hmm. when, when you have those, you know, everybody, and I've done it, you know, it's a statistic that's out there that people will spend their money on going out to eat before they pay their own bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why they got this thing called a payment plan. And it's like, you know, let me make this. <laughs> We're going to make it work. We communicate, and that's all the bill collectors want to hear. They want to get some money. But, you know, the reality is that it's, it's, a, it's real. Like, people would rather spend their money on other things versus focusing on what they need to do to make their lives a change. They exercise their mm -hmm. gift. They become afraid of the success. It's like if all five of us got some weed, some drink, and we all chilling, who give a fuck about how we're going to get the next dollar? We're going to think about this next minute. Yep. <laughs> and you know, you're not thinking that all this money you just spending that time is gone, and what do you have to show for it? Yeah, exactly. Man, what's crazy, what, there's a few homies that it's, it's been an ongoing, like, joke. We'd be like, man, this nigga afraid of success. It's real. Because he, he do everything except for what he knows he needs to do to succeed. And it's like, you know, every couple years or every so many months, you, you know, you go point it to, nah, bro, you can't point the finger at nobody but yourself. It's the first problem. It's like, man, Person you know what you mirror. need to do, but you don't apply it. Like, you, like, people will go and tell the next person what they need to do which is exactly what you need to do. Like, they know mentally, I need to do this. But you're going to go and tell the next person they need to do that. No, you need to take your own advice, bro. And that's just what life, period. Like, you can't go and, and you know, try to, you know, spit game and, and call yourself, you know, sharing game. But it's like you're not applying it to yourself. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's idiotic. <laughs> no, that's, that's passing off other information. 
That's like, you know what? I got the story on how to make a million dollars, but all I got is A and I got Z. I started this <laughs> and then I got a million dollars, but I've never done it before. He did it and he told me how he did it, but I didn't finish the story. I didn't think about nothing else. And that's really how it is. Like, mm-hmm. and that's, it's a cold world. But for your perspective, talking about the music and the entertainment world, did the game choose you or did you choose the game? Man, at the end of the... I mean, actually, it went hand in hand, honestly. Because, like, uh, my family, it's musicians, all in my family, all down my bloodline. You know, we got family members that was in Duke Ellington's, you know, big band. Uh, man, we... Cousins, Dizzy Gillespie, famous trumpet player. You know, and I'm a trumpet player. I, I play trumpet. Jazz musician, jazz trumpet player. Outside where we parked that, they got the Stockton Jazz, and mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't know Stockton was a jazz hub, like, in order, because, you know, you don't see that in every city, like, you damn sure ain't gonna see no jazz stuff, like, and when I seen that, I was like, man, no, this must have been a real jazz stopping ground. They used to have, like, a jazz festival every, I think it was in, like, the summertime, they, they stopped it some years ago, but I think it was, uh, I want to say around Windmill Cove, oh. and I think a few times they had it at the Weber Point. But it was, uh, it, I mean, Stockton's active. It, it'd be so much that be, you know, shifting through here. And, you know, people, if you don't, if you ain't tapped in, what well, you ain't gonna know about it. <laughs> it's like that with a lot of people. I mean, just like underground music. Like, it'd be so many dope-ass hot artists. But it's like, if you ain't got your ears to the street, you ain't gonna even know. Facts, facts. I mean, and like with us, we use that as motivation. Like, you always gotta, you know, it's... To us, we don't look at it as competing because we don't compete with nobody. At the end of the day, come on, I mean that's reflection in the mirror. I mean it's just if you if you know that you're confident and you're the best at what you do, it's not a competition. I I would never. This is the thing about it. Like I don't do it as you know being arrogant, cocky, none of that. Nah, like any of the homies hit me up and they ask me any info, I tell a person. I don't, I don't give a fuck what it is. Like. You know, one the, the homie Young Rick, like, he getting the studio together. Hey, man, what, 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 hey, hey, man, get this, get this, get this. I mean, it'd be pieces of equipment that I wouldn't even tell a motherfucker to buy because, nigga, that's my secret. I tell my niggas, like, hey, man, I want to see you win. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, get this, get this. Hey, buy this one. You're going to save money. And it's fucking this one up. And that one's three times. And this is half the price. Like, you get this. Nobody know about it. And, mm. You know, they win. Chico. But, you know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, it's at the end of the day, like, I don't compete with my peers and my folks. Like, if I call you my folks, I'm, I'm like, I'm not going, you know, it's not a competition. Like, we all in this together. We all here to uplift each other. Come on. So if I got game that I can share with you, man, I'm going to give it to you, man. I, I don't want nothing for it, man. Just do your thing with it, bro. Yeah, let's <laughs> see how you shine. Mm-hmm. That's real. What would you consider your first confirmation that music is what you're supposed to do? With it, with you know, with it, pretty much music being in your blood, being in the soil, being all influence in the atmosphere. You know, when was it that you embrace it as like you considered the first affirmation and confirmation? Like, this is what I gotta do. I already see the floor in my shoes matching this floor that I'm in now <laughs> today, and I'm building. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting up all the plaques that I need to have on back order. Run me my, run me my wall space. Man, it's. it's... It's hard to say, man, because, like I said, like, we, music been in the family. Like, my mom, she was, like, the first um, lady DJ, like, in the area. Mm. And, you know, she's a female bass player. She had a, you know, like, a show band in the 80s. They used to all uh, perform at, like, Night Creation and stuff. Like, they had their band, Night Creation had theirs. They toured, you know, did shows all over the world and stuff. And, you know, they, it, like I said, music was always around. So, as a kid... You know, my mom would be DJing at the parks and stuff and big black family that big ass crowd and stuff. You know, it was just one of the things like, hey, man, like my stepdad played drums, you know, he was in a Franklin jazz band uh, with Mr. Wan. We was all in, you know, band. So it was like music has always been around. My uncles played guitar, sing. So it, it's just one of the natural things. Like we, we just picked it up and just from there, it's just like, hey, this is what we going to do. <laughs> no, that's real. You know. Uh, Marvin Gaye the third is my season three finale, and so a lot of people don't know that he was a professional motorbike racer. Like he rode the motorbikes. Oh, yeah. He was the first black um, professional motor X racer, and so a lot of people don't know that he didn't chase the path of his father. His mother is Barry Gordy's sister. His dad, oh, yeah. Marvin Gaye. <laughs> you know, it's in his blood. 
but he didn't go down that path initially. He went down the path of this is my excitement. This is my this career. Is what, my yeah, this is what makes him. So, you know, I asked that question because I was blown away on his answer. And at the same time, I'm like, man, did, did there be a choice of like, do I not do what everybody does? Or is it like the light go off that all oh, this is easy for me and I need to keep on applying yeah. pressure to see what comes out the, you know, come out the whole egg of life. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's crazy, because it's like, even like besides music, like, I have, I can basically damn near do whatever I want to do. Like, if I wanted to be a mechanic, I could probably open up a damn car lot or, or you know, mechanic shop in a year, and I'm a figure, you know, I'm a, like, I'm a, know how to do this shit. So, it's like, regardless of what I touch, I'm a, you know, I'm going to make the best out of it. That's right. So, it, you know. It, it doesn't matter what field it is, it, it's natural. It like it, it's always been like that with me. Like regardless of what it is, if I want to do it, it's 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 natural. Like I'm gonna get it done. So even if it wasn't music, it, whatever I touched, it, it it was gonna be it. Mm. <laughs> mm. It just so happens that music with that, you know, that it's in the blood. So it's like it, it was it was just a no brainer, basically. Easy. Yep. Easy I mean, it's, it's in the soul. <laughs> come on, come on. I ain't talking about the shoes. <laughs> I feel it's always somebody that invests an idea or puts the idea that the dream could become a reality. So who do you owe to thank you for investing into making your dreams become a reality? Man, my parents. I mean, because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Mm. You know, mm. that that that's just that that's just that, you know. And then on top of that, like so like my pops, he's an activist. He's a Black Panther, like frontliner, sure. like sure. out there with Huey P. Newton, all of them. Like he actually started the Black Panther chapter in the um, the Monterey Seaside area, and you know in the Bay Area that that way. So when they was doing like them shootouts and stuff, like pops was on the front line out there, you know, putting mm. in work. <laughs> so yeah, it's like so. Besides that, like you know, he but he's an artist. My brother, he's an artist. You know, like T could draw his ass off, and so he inherited that from my, you know, from my dad. You know, and so my dad played percussion. T played percussion. He plays drums, bass. My mom played bass. You know what I'm saying? But then, like even with the music, whatever T touched, like he he's gonna master it. Mm. So you know, it's, you know, every everything goes. You know, it, it's it's to the to the fam because you know without moms and pops we wouldn't be here at all. Like my mom invested. In, you know, in our situation, so you know, she she bought us our first expensive microphone. She you know she had equipment laying around, you know, from when she was doing her band and stuff. And I think we was in middle school. We was at Hamilton, and uh, my mom had a, a gospel choir at the time. So she was programming the music for it. And then so when they kind of stopped doing that, the equipment was just sitting there. <laughs> so um, Teak went in there one day and was just like. I had to figure this out, man. Like, went in there and asked my mate, how do this, do this, do this. And so then he started programming for them, for the gospel oh. choir. And then, so literally he was composing. And back in the day, the hardest way to, to compose music was, it's called step recording. So you're basically doing everything note by note. It's like you're doing a score. Oh. That's how Teak was doing the music. So it... it yeah, it, it was difficult as hell, but it's like you hit play and this is a whole ass song playing back, and this nigga just you know <laughs> play looking like, like a DJ. You go, what? <laughs> like, like how like how we normally just you know be like uh, uh. it it was different back then. Like you could do it that way, but there's a that was a whole another method. You can't even I don't even think these things got the function to do step recording. But that shit, that was when when he when he did that, I was like, yeah, this, this nigga, he's special. <laughs> <laughs> That's a baby genius, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just like, wow, like that. And he's in middle school. Like, how many kids you know that's doing like that? That was just some advanced shit. Yeah, that's that something. he didn't read a book on. <laughs> that was the crazy that's, part about it. Like, that's gifted. he just paid attention and just did it. And so, yeah, it was just for there. It's like he learned it, and then I, I started learning it. And then, you know, through high school, T graduated, went to UC Davis. Uh, you know, because he, he got his, his degree, bio, uh, biochemistry. 
Okay. So he's like pre med, like he going to do forensics and all types of shit. He wanted to go for sports medicine, but yeah, he got his degree. Uh-huh. So if he didn't want to do music, he'd go, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> and, and cash in and make bank right now. But you know, he went to college, and so you know, I'm I'm out here running the streets and stuff, and I'm just I graduated and I just started messing with equipment and stuff, and I'm like, man. And you know, uh, that was your time to grow with the equipment. Yeah. So I I took it up. See, back then we was on four tracks. So we on cassette tape, but I had the computer back. See, nobody was on computers back then. Right. They had ADATs and people were still using the four tracks. So I wouldn't have this computer that we built. Ordered all the parts. I used to put shit together, you know, any big monster ass computer, but it was a program that wasn't even supposed to be for recording. Uh-huh. It wasn't even supposed to be for producing. And I just figured it out and, and trick it, it was called Rhythmania or something like that. But it was some weird ass shit. There's a little dude standing there with two feet and two hands. And you only have four tracks. We did whole songs with just four tracks. Uh, <laughs> and so I had acid. Nobody was on acid. And so I just, uh, I, you know, we didn't have, we couldn't sync shit up, nothing. So I'm thinking about, I'm like, okay, so if I do click two, three, record. Like, that's how we did everything, just... One, two, three, record. And that's how we were syncing everything up. Like literally just timing. Uh, uh. And so then we went and bought an ADAT because everybody had ADATs. Like when people seen that we had a computer, it's like, oh man, what you doing with that toy, man? Oh, you need an ADAT, man. Got that fucking toy in there, man. Ain't nobody using the computer. <laughs> Little do they know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, the craziest thing is some years later when all them ADATs played out, Guess who phone started ringing when everything switched to computers? Hey, man, yeah, man, we got this computer, man. You think you can hook this Pro Tools up for us? <laughs> oh, the toy. Oh, you got the toy that you was telling us, oh, that you laughed about? Yeah, I got you, bro. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> Damn. But it's crazy because, like, we was on Pro Tools, like, psh. Everybody was on ADAS, we was on Pro Tools. <laughs> It's crazy. So it's like we was way ahead of the, the, the freaking curve. Facts. And it just shit just spun around. It, it's it's crazy though. Like we, we got a whole I mean, I'm going for days on how man we used to do shit, but it it's crazy. Well no, it definitely showcases your guys' creativity and your unorthodox style to be able to dibble into the West Coast like the most gangsterous sound and have all these different elements of that to having, you know, love songs and teenage love songs to to you know, something that's deep for the soul and roots you. And just to have all these different elements, you know, it's a gumbo pot. But it's like, you could tell, like, okay, there was this, a moment where it was an aha moment where I figured this out. I figured that out. I figured this out. And then you just started to build them all together until you had a nice foundation of like, oh, let me go to this. Let me go to this drawer right here. Pull this out. <laughs> and, and this roll of decks of cards is going to make all of this for this. All right, next day. All right, come on, T. We finna do this like this. And we're going to run this. We're going to run this. And then, you know, now we got this whole accolades of like, man, we still got more work to do, but look what we got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy, man. It, but through that run, brother, I could tell that also you learned relationships was a key value to the success of your, you know, the family of everybody moving. They were part of big bands. You're from, from big relatives to immediate relatives that you see every day. There was big brands. It was a village of making things work. It wasn't just this person, this person. You got to see everyone come together to make an event go. You had families at, at the park and barbecues to really showcase that it's a good time, it's a vibe. And that really showcases just the value in relationships. So, you know, and a lot of people, they dismiss them. What right. can you tell the listeners about, you know, your value in relationships along this way? Man, at the end of the day, man, you got you to... Gotta... If you stay level-headed and grounded... Anything can happen. Come on, you can't get shot. It's just, it's just one of them things. It's, it's a life lesson too. Like, you believe in something, you go for it. You got to keep your head on straight though. You can easily fall off and get sidetracked, but the people who's always been there for you, they gonna be there for you. Though you, you, you can't turn your back on them. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, those are the ones that, that's gonna make sure you make it to where you need to be. When you start falling off, they're gonna be there. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna they're gonna have your back. 
a lot of times people tend to bypass them and go with the new crowd. Mm. The, the ones that they just met and then it's just like, man, I, you know, shit go bad there. I told you so. I'm like, nah, you, you got to stay focused on, you know, your primary people. And it's like a lot of people, they lose track of that, you know, in life. So it's, it, it's just, it's one of them, one of them things, man. You just, you just gotta, you gotta stay grounded, level headed with anything that you do and, and the thing's gonna fall into place. Yeah, that's what so it's that, supposed you know, to be, it's going to be. Yeah, but it's, you know, you, you like they say, man, you gotta take care of home. Mm. You know. You know. <laughs> TK Kirkland, it was TK that said, uh, someone gotta turn the water on for you, right? And he was like, that's the biggest thing y'all remember about relationships. Sometimes you're gonna be so busy doing everything you do, you still gonna need someone to turn that water on for you while oh, you're yeah. doing something. And so, you know, that's the whole thing to remember, remind yourself that you can't go off on a tangent of emotion or attitude because your mm-hmm. attitude will be the first thing to be remembered when it comes to anything that comes to some money later on. Exactly. I mean, it, and at the end of the day, it's like, I tell people all the time, man, you can't act off emotions all the time because that will be your biggest downfall. Regardless of what the situation is, like, man, I'm just a straight up hothead. I ain't give a fuck. Somebody say something crazy to me, man. I'm going off man. Like, I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm checking. Hey, t Captain. <laughs> I done had no problem checking people. So I used to, you know, somebody say something crazy, or, you know, do a little sub, and I tear their ass up. Hey, man. He's like, hey, man, you can't do that. Like, man, you know, we, like, we're on a different level now, bro. Like, we got different people looking and watching us. Like, you can't do that. Like, especially, like, on social media. Like, when he said that, it's just like, yeah, I, I see, yeah. And he had, to, he had to remind me quite a few times. So now I, I tend to just stay on social media with that. It's like, bro, if I catch you, I'm going to catch you. Like, <laughs> hang on. You ain't getting no warnings, bro. Just, just remember you said that shit. But, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, man. People act off emotions all the time. And, you know, I tell them, like, that'll be a downfall. You got to get, yeah. I mean, because once you, once you say something to somebody, they're not going to forget it. That's they, a may, they, they may say, hey, you know, it's good. Like, I forgive you, but they ain't going to forget it. <laughs> come on, come on. Man, Look. that tongue fights like a sword sometimes. Mm-hmm. You may cut yourself off sometimes. You know, I wanted to make sure we spend some time on the importance of practice after practice after practice. You know, being an outlier, putting 10,000 hours in to master your craft. And a lot of people dismiss the fact that it's not an overnight success. Nothing came overnight except for some sleep and a dream, maybe, Mm -hmm. that you may not remember because you didn't hit rim. And, (laughs) you know, that's none of our business. but (laughs) But, you know... A lot of people dismiss that. They think that it's just going to come like this. They won't read a book, but think that they can be the master at, at producing. Or, or they can't. They won't read a book, but they, don't, they think that they can write a song, but never learn how song structure works. And it takes so much hours of work put in to understand everything. It's that saying of, you could pay me for all the time I put in to do this. It took me 15 minutes. You could pay someone six hours. It's a novice, and you know, you're going to get the same mm-hmm. bill. What you want to do? And, you know, that value kicks in. It's like, what can you tell the listeners on your path of, of achieving everything and about how many, you know, the hours you put in, the practice after practice, the paint on these walls on the outside before we got here? <laughs> Man, I probably still got, as a matter of fact, I got on my Apple Watch. <laughs> Man, at the end of the day, man, hard work pays off. And we are, you know, look at us. <laughs> Living proof. Like, people think, like, things was easy. Nah, it ain't never been easy. Like, I was telling my brother-in-law, like, matter of fact, early this morning, like, man, we used to goon. <laughs> like, literally, we'd be in the studio out here putting in work, like, literally 48 hours straight, maybe 72 hours, me, Bear, and Teak, and my boy Rich, nonstop in the studio, gooning. <clears throat> work, work, work. Get a phone call. Hey, need you to slide to Oakland. Do this session work for Black Alicia. Boom, nigga, we in the in the in the, in the two dough, pushing out to the bay, <laughs> out there till you know four five in the morning. Drive back to Stockton, do some work. Uh, get another call. Hey, need to head to Jackson. Boom, hop right back on the freeway. Head to Jackson. Uh, get another call. Got to be in L.A. Boom, on the freeway to L.A. Mind you, we ain't slept yet. Mm. <laughs> 
And we was doing this for years. And like I just like we was talking about it earlier, and I'm like, I don't know what that like I can't even stay. I'll be nine off the stoplight now. <laughs> <laughs> But I used to be the only one driving too, so that was a tick don't drive. T had no license. <laughs> so I'm I'm the butler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're the chauffeur. I'm I'm, a, I'm the Farnsworth Bitly. Like, nigga, you be like, put this bull tie on, nigga, and drive. Shut up. But yeah, nah, <laughs> we, we used to. the back seat so I can lay out. Nah, but for real, it's like we, we used to literally like back to back to back to back grinding, like nonstop. Like, man, I done been through quite a few relationships just because. It ain't easy with it. Like, you, you're going to go through, you know, some bumps and shit. But when everything pans out and, and, and them stars align, like, you're going to be good. You like, it, 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 man, it literally don't happen overnight at all. <clears throat> like, you may get a phone call, you know, but that's after you didn't put in your work and things start lining up for you. But until then, like, man, when you grinding and people catch wind of it, all she wrote. <laughs> you know, all that traveling I was doing it and grinding and, you know, the sleep is, you know, for the week, especially when it comes to moments and opportunities because when that moment hits play, you got to hit go. You got to mm-hmm. go get that opportunity and make something of it. And, you know, that's just a testament to understanding what the gift is and what it takes because if you decided not to do this, if you decided not to do that, you know, we wouldn't have certain conversations of what would have because it did. And that's something that's really important for people to understand that you have to be able to do, to do, to do. And I gotta ask, what's one people? What's one thing people got fucked up about being a musician? <laughs> I mean, what? It, man, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a few things they got fucked up about being a musician. <laughs> I mean, one of the one of the things is they think just because you can do it, they can do it. Nah, bro, it ain't that easy. Like, like when we started off, we wasn't going online and, and just stealing whole ass samples and shit. Like, we actually playing stuff. Like, we're live musicians, too, so we make our own samples. But nowadays, like, you can just go on a splice or whatever and take this loop and take this sample and just hit and just add drums to it. Like, okay, that's cool. Nigga, you a beat maker. You're not a producer. Yeah, you're not a producer. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge... Di- like, and I don't knock nobody doing that because, I mean, I don't niggas that got bangers doing that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the facts of the facts. Like, if, if someone took that away from you and took your computer away from you, what you gonna do? Like, I don't, I don't need a computer. Like, nigga, I got straight, you know... Mod sound mods like I go and bang out straight from scratch. Do it to this day, you know. <laughs> if computers didn't exist, still making bangers like we old school MPC with the big ass zip drives, like all of that floppy dip, like drum sounds, having to sample your your drum sound, your bass drums, all that. Like we used to literally sit up and dig records and get this bass drum and layer them in like five, six bass drums, put it together and make one like. Now you just go online and boop, but you know, like I said, like people think, like, oh yeah, yeah, I make beats, yeah, do, 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 yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. that's cool. There's a different beat maker, producer, mm. you know, Facts. musician, beat maker. But there, there's, there's, it's a big ass scope. Yeah, it's all within the scope of music, Come but on. the production end, it's, it's, you know, can you compose music? There's a huge difference. There's another one, you know, there's a difference between a rapper and a songwriter. Mm-hmm. Or a rapper and an MC. <laughs> Anybody right. can do A, B, C, D, E, L, G, but you know. <laughs> you know what, something else I'm going to bring it up right now because we're talking about it. A lot of people don't understand that producers that make stuff are so much involved in writing the song. Whether it's, you know, the hook, the verses, because they're making stuff fit in pockets. They're giving so much suggestions. There's so much that goes in. And you get these rappers that, you know, they'll get a demo and they'll get a certain percentage of the record and you look on the thing and it's like, oh, this producer has writer credits. You know, then, you know, people will dismiss that and not realize that there is work put in. This just mm-hmm. didn't come from nowhere. Ain't no one finna just give us some credit and give us some money on, on pub. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I mean, there's, there's another side to it, too. There's also composing and arranging. You still get that same, you know, the same thing you're doing that. So, like, just say, like, with Bear, for instance. Like, he'd come in, like, we produced a record. He'd come in, he'd do his writing. So, he'd be in here, he'd lay down what he got, and then I'm like, all right, now it's my turn. Do this like this. I'm giving harmony notes. We, you know, we bouncing ideas off one another. It's like, it's teamwork. Mm. So it, you know, it's it's it it all goes hand in hand. But it's like if you just somebody just press and record, you ain't gonna get that same, you know, recognition. And it's like the outcome ain't gonna be the same. Anybody could press record on on you know on a on a freaking keyboard. Come on. But it's like, are you producing fully producing a record? That's not producing a record. You're just recording somebody. So you know that it you know. There's a difference from an engineer and a nigga just press and record. That's real. Like, man, I've been doing this shit for years. I do this shit in my sleep. I do it with my feet on me. I sleep this time. Yep, nigga. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what? As, as we're putting the attention on the value of what a real producer brings to the table, what a real musician brings to the table, what a real artist brings to the table, I want to know from your perspective, what has been your three most rewarding moments so far in the game? I would say the three most rewarding. I would say being able to tour the world with people that I idolized and looked up to as artists. Getting our first, you know, gold plaque. And then just, you know, having, you know, having my family backing us and supporting us and having our city backing the hell out of us and supporting us. Like if you don't have that hometown love, it's just it it it's scarce. It's it's a cold situation. It's gonna have you on the move looking for But it's like <laughs> when you you know, like I would be fresh off tour and get into town and my friends be like, Hey man, you know, it man, it, it feel good. You know what I'm saying? And it's like if you you know for for what we did and for the, because like we was touring the world in high school, you know, playing jazz band, you know, and jazz. So we'd be in New York, Canada, you know, they like they used to go to Japan. Like we was all over the world. We was we teenagers. So we, we got put out there at a young age on that platform. So that was our first real taste of it. And then being older, getting into the other side of music, producing and stuff. Tapping in all these different areas, it, man, it's it's lovely. It's lovely. Mm. <laughs> How much of that journey was manifestation? Man, <laughs> at the end of the day, man, I look at it like this: if it was destined to happen, it was going to happen, mm. and mm. it happened. Come on, you arrived at so many destinations and took back <laughs> off. I mean, just there's like there's clips online with you know me, Brandy, and DJ Scratch chilling in a in a cargo van. You know what I'm saying? Just having a ball, chilling. We hanging out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How many people you know that get an opportunity like that? And I mean, as Brandy, you talking about EP and D, DJ Scratch? Nah, it's a um, not DJ Scratch. Uh, Damn, it's not DJ Scratch. I can't remember dude's name. My bad, homie, but... <laughs> <laughs> we may have to cut that out. But yeah, it's a... Uh, but yeah, like, we, you know, just having a ball. Same thing, like, Jay-Z's Monster Jam. Like, man, I've been everywhere. Lil Wayne's I Am Music, Neo. Like, I'm hanging out with these niggas. Like, we together every single day. Like, crazy. <laughs> What has been your biggest hip hop moment so far? The biggest hip hop moment. I mean, you got I am hip hop tattooed on your arm, and I know there's a good value into what you're about to tell me. So go ahead. It's oh my goodness, it's, that, that's that's a, that's a hard stretch, man. Just because it all it all comes back full circle. So when we was younger. Me and Teak performed at the county fair. Ghetto Boys. Mind playing tricks on you. Big ass stage. 
like, what about this high? Scarface was always one of my favorites. We got records with Scarface. Growing up listening to E-40. Got records with E-40. Listen to N.W.A. Working with Q. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all these things, man. Like, it's, they, they all just, that, 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 it's all one big ass collective. Like, everything that we wanted to do, we, we either done it or it's in the process. Like, matter of fact, Red Man, all time favorite MC, hands down. <laughs> Red Man tapped in with us some months ago. Blew us up like, yo, man, this is crazy. Like, yo, I need these records. Dope. Like, it's, it's, it, it, everything, man, it's, it's so many different weird ass things that happen and they just, they, they fall into place. And it's all, and the crazy part about it is these people know our records. And don't even know it's us. <laughs> Till we get to talking to him, and it's just like, yo, y'all did that? Like, like Red Man was on Instagram slapping the hell out of Dub C's uh, record that we did for him. I mean, went on his live like, yo, Dub, nigga, I'm in LA, nigga, oh, this my joint. So then when we when he tapped in with us, he called like at, I want to say it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Sent the text message and sent the email, then start calling, like, yo, bro, like this. And then, so he's like, yo, man, like, yeah, that joint that you was at, Dub C Records, like, yo, did that? What? And we tell him some of the other records, like, yo, bro, like, that's, like, dude, like. <laughs> and it's happened like that with a lot of, like, artists. Yeah. Like, we tell him some of the records we did, and it's just like, yo, y'all niggas is crazy. <laughs> like, DJ Battle Cat, like, that, that's the big homie, like. He heard some of the joints we did, and he was just like, y'all niggas, <laughs> y'all bonkers, like, I got no, and man, like, we, that's one of our favorite West Coast producers, and so now it's like, we tapped in with him, like, he, we hit him up with a comment on it, so this nigga hit us right, boom, that's dumb. nothing, like, it, they, you know, it happens. <laughs> Salute, Battle Cat, legend, shoot. I'm going to put a pause on the entertainment questions and I'm going to dig into my two segments. Uh, but, man, it's a legend in front of me. As much as I just said, you know, DJ Battlecat's a legend, I got to make sure I give you your flowers, give your brother his flowers, because you guys are legendary to this West Coast sound. You guys are legendary to pretty much, you know, the wave of how sounds transition and all these different pockets and arrangements. And, you know, you guys really helped put the forefront of this is not just a West Coast sound. Good looking, man. Thank you, thank you. 100, bro. Uh, my next segment is my awareness segment. You know, I feel that knowledge is power, but when you use that knowledge, it becomes a superpower. And, you know, right now with all the times going on, I've been, you know, from the first episode, I asked every guest of mine, when's the last time they're pulled over? And what's some advice they can give in a situation of interacting with the police so that, you know, they can make it out? Man, I was just pulled over like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's crazy because, like, a few years ago, my boy, uh, R.I.P. Robbie, actually him and my boy Champ, he's, you know, Champ, we grew up together, that, you know, Luther Brown, that, that's, that's my boy, like, grew up in Crow Valley, you know, ran the streets, you know, you know, did our thing together, but lost touch for some years, every time we see, it, nothing, like, you know, childhood, uh. back, but uh, after, he got killed by the police, back turned. You know, one of them situations. Mm. Wasn't even a threat, hitting the fence. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get away. Mm. They killed him. So, we doing protests and stuff for it. And somewhere down the line, I start getting random ass phone calls. Because, like, I put out, like, I'm going to stand up for whatever it is. And, you know, people know, you know, like, like my affiliation, you know, through my family, you know, like the Panthers and stuff like that. So, and I also make it be known. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to speak up for mine. Come like, on, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to stand up for mine, period. So, when all this is going on, like, we frontlining it. 
like, you know, nigga Czar, like, we, we out there, period, like, and so, leaving one of the, uh, one of the marches, <clears throat> about, what, two cop cars got behind me, knew my name, mm. told me, go home, mm. don't come back to the next one, hey, what, can't tell up. me nothing, <laughs> so, I get some block calls the very next, was it the next day or is it a few days later it was supposed to have been another march. I get a few block calls and I actually do have one of the voicemails still. And it was basically telling me, do not go to the march. Mm. Like, stay out of it. Who are you? <laughs> so one of the times I answered, because it, it was block calls, block calls. So, you know, what's up? This, you know, yeah, this sounds what? You know, who is this? Don't worry about it. Don't go to the march. What? You don't tell me. Well, I'm just letting you know. Boom. Like on some movie stuff. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, for real. But it was just, just weird things like that. So I go to the march. Get ready to leave. Getting ready to head back out north. I get pulled over on um, El Dorado. Right by the Civic. Three cop cars. Oh, this, it was, me, they was ready. What am I doing? Where am I going? Why am I out here? Participating in the march. For what? Mm. They got a right to. Come on. Like, hey, I'm like do, people. You, do you have a reason to be pulling me over? Why are y'all talking to me? Like, I ain't did nothing. I'm driving. I'm doing the speed limit. You know, going somewhere. What's the probable cause? So, yeah, it j you know, just stuff like that. And they're just like, look. Don't cause no problems. Won't be no problems. Mm -hmm. That was what was said to me. I'm like, problems like what? I'm driving home. Minding my damn business. Why are you at this march? That, that, that's all they kept saying. Why are you at this march? What are you doing here? Don't cause no problems. Won't be no problems. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, it, is there anything you got to say? Like if you, Are we you know, you, you, we finished. I, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm too, too. Call my girl, like, hey, I got pulled over by these assholes. They fuck me, you know. So as soon as I do that, you're all right. Have a nice day, my son, to do. Oh uh, yeah, now y'all let me go, cause I'm gonna speak for my girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, documentation on that ass. Right. But it's just stuff like that, man. So, like, recently, I'm driving, get pulled over. Yeah, you speeding. Yeah, seen this car going. I'm like, man, I wasn't even going that fast, bro. But same old thing, man. Like, if I would have been talking, and, and I was on my way to work. <laughs> so, I'm like, dude, you about to make me late. I leave home in enough time to get there and just clock in. But I'm just like, dude, like, if, if I would have been having a bad day, I would have been like, man, what the fuck? It probably would have been a good situation. And there's been times where I've been pulled over and I didn't told the cop, man, what the fuck do you want, man? Like, why are you bothering me? Like, you see this nigga that just sped past you doing 99? Right. And I'm doing 60 and a 55? Man, get the fuck out of here. And they just start talking crazy and start calling for backup and stuff. Like, come on, bro. Like, they, it, it's it's all a target thing, man. They they, they target certain people and they, they go off you the way you look and how you react to. So I tell people, man, I don't even talk to these fools. Like, all cops ain't bad cops. But it's like, there's, there's, there, I say probably 70% of them assholes. Mm. So if they want to pull your car, they're going to pull it and get away with it. <laughs> and we see it every day happening on the news. Like, they do shit and they get off. Oh, probable cause, blah, blah, blah. Man, you know, they, they, fucking crooked system, but at the end of the day, my tell people, man, don't say a motherfucking word to these fools. Unless you say, the faster you're going to be. That's real. And less, less, you know, less things that can happen to you. You know, be prepared, ask for permission to reach for things and, and of that nature. And you know what? Don't be afraid to, to talk to the police, because I feel like that's something else that we was hearing, you know, OGs talk about in the studio out there in LA and it was like you know a lot of people a lot of these youngsters are afraid to go to jail they'd rather get shot and go through this whole banana situation of trying to argue over certain things back and forth versus bro, Something take me to just jail been, yeah. or, or do the paperwork or let me go it's, it's your options mm -hmm. and people gotta get back into that sense of like you know 
sometimes you do got to have your day in court. Like, you yeah. know, you got to push this line of, it's this or that, let me go. Yep. <laughs> You're 100% correct. <laughs> I got my next segment, you know, it's, you know, we're going to take a little bit, a load off from thinking so deep, but it's going to have you still thinking, but it's a little bit more fun. It's called Impulse Q&A. And so I got Impulse questions I wrote down earlier. I want your Impulse answer. You got to answer three questions. <coughs> <laughs> Damn, I guess that means this is, that's going to be bad. <laughs> my, my I think you need some water, bro. You know, I think I want you to keep this in here too. <laughs> I had a burpee. Nah, he said, don't do it. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> My oh, bad, shit. Man. Nah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm happy he wasn't trying to ask a question. Because <laughs> I would have been like, damn, like... Was you going to say something? But, yeah, so I got this thing, impulse q and I want you to answer three questions. If you don't like the question, so I'm good. I'm going to hit you with another one because I still want you to answer three. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Question number one. What is the funniest thing you've seen happen in real life? <laughs> I said nigga shit on himself. Just Ooh. walking. <laughs> Somebody you know is just random. It's a random person. <laughs> like, literally, like, Oh, nah. Mm. 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 That's PTSD with that laugh. Shit. Hey. <laughs> so, bro, I manage a restaurant, right? And when I used to, I'd open sometimes, you know, they don't like letting the managers open because they feel like I got to be there all fucking day and night, lunch, to dinner rush, all that bullshit. So I go to open one day, and somehow they let the front door be open some kind of way. And someone had rolled they self in there. You notice I said the word rolled. I didn't know somebody <laughs> rolled in there. I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't cut on the bathroom lights before we open. It's like 15 minutes before we open. I didn't cut them on. Let me go back and cut this on. I see the women's bathroom light on. Like, ain't no women in here. Why the women's bathroom light on? Like, this don't make no sense. It wasn't on when I opened. Like, I walk. Okay. I go in there, and it's a guy in there that's naked. And he's trying to give himself a bath. And he's in a wheelchair. And when I say I'm scarred, I'm scarred because when you told me about seeing someone take a shit, I'm like, man, that man has some crusty smell that's out of this world. And all I said, bro, I don't want to call the police and I for sure don't want to throw you out, but you got to go. You got to go right motherfucking now. I don't deal with the police, but I for sure don't want to touch you, bro, so you got to go. And he left like five minutes later and he just wheeled and he had just a gown over him. I'm just like, gosh, I feel bad for you, brother, but. Not up in here, bro. <laughs> like, Not up in here. There's, there's some other options for you. Damn. Question number two. What is one thing you love, but you wish you hated? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. That's what that's a... Something I love but I wish I hated would be work sometimes. You know, I love work. I do it so much that sometimes I got to be reminded that I got to call my wife. I got to check in on my kids. I got to make sure that the house is cool sometimes. I'll be so engulfed. And I'll be like, you know, I wish there was a way that my brain would be like, boom, check about this. But it'd be like, boom, tunnel vision. All this shit going on. It's not because it's shiny. It's just because when you focus on your legacy and generational wealth, you're going to do everything it takes to get there. You ain't going to be the one to say, I wanted to do it, but I didn't do nothing about it when the time came. Actually, I do got an answer for that one. It's being being talented in multiple fields. It's a gift and a curse. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, dope is fucking what, as, in what you do. But people expect you to do everything. Like they don't, they don't remember you're still one person that, and you're still human. That'd be the coldest part. Like, motherfucker, I eat shit, sleep, so drink, yeah, it's everything. A, yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's yeah, so it's a gift and a curse. Like, yeah, like yeah, I can do all this shit, not a problem. But I think I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. You know, uh, question number three. I don't know if this is a moment for you, so I may actually get a pass, but you know what I'm gonna ask it anyways because I feel like. You get so prepared that, that you make sure you're ready for anything. You feel me? You ain't got to get ready if you stay ready. 
But I feel like there's a moment in time that you may have not been ready that prepared you. So no matter what, you are ready. And when you talked about Cube earlier and having him play on the spot, and you was like, I'm not the one. We not the one that's going to be laughed out of here because we fumbled the ball on the touchdown and we lost the game. You know, was there a time you bombed something and would you want to redo it? See, and that's that's a I no, I, I I really can't recall no one situation where we just like just fumble. Like everything, cause the thing about it is we was always it was instilled in us like do your best at everything, regardless of what it is. Even if you fuck up, like you know that you gave it your all. So mm. at the end of the day, it's not a fuck up. Mm. Mm. So if you really Put, if you really working hard and you putting your time in your, and you really focus on something, it's not going to come out as bad as you think. You may think mentally, man, I fucked this up, but it may be amazing to the next person. Mm, that's the approach. So it was never a thought of this is the long way because I made a mistake. It's because this is the right way. Yeah, it, it's not even that. It's just grind until you can't grind no more. Mm. That's it's, always been our mentality. Like, just, just, you know, grinding. Straight, said, straight, straight beast on break. It. That, so that, that's always been the, the situation. We just grind nonstop until we can't do it no more. And until I die, man, I'll be 90 years old. And, you know, Lord willing, doing the same shit. <laughs> you know, talking about grinding and grinding all my life, I think of Nipsey Hustle and thinking of hustling. You know, I want to ask you a hustling question because I feel like you can sell anything anywhere and get yourself back home. So, what would be a third world country you would be in, and what would you have to sell to get back home? Anything. Shit. I damn sure ain't selling my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll put some yitches on a blade to get back somewhere. <laughs> you understand me? I'll just give you the what edit. Man, I'll take the easy route. Hey, girl, going to twerk for a couple of dollars. You turn the pimp. <laughs> That's real. Hey, I'm just saying, sex sells. <laughs> Come on, Hollywood makes so much money on it. They had cartoons make money on it. You understand me? I'm just saying, though. <laughs> on that note, brother, you have survived my awareness segment. <clears throat> Hold on, I got a producer question. I was wondering, um, you know, it's it's been difficult for artists and stuff to tour and, you know, just make money during this, this quarantine or this COVID lockdown. How have you been able to, you know, stay afloat, keep a roof over your head during this time? Man, honestly, it's because we've just been consistent. Like, if you got your, your foundation and you got your core people that you deal with regardless your shit gonna stay, like, everything gonna stay moving. So, like, the same people that I came in the game with is the same people I deal with on the daily. So, and I mean, ain't nothing stopping. If it, I mean, honestly, the quarantine, I mean, this this whole pandemic helped us out a lot. Because it actually pushed us to get in this building. I feel like the quarantine allowed ownership to be really applied. It allowed you to really do the research of, like, hey, I've been wanting to do this. You took everything away from me. I need to go outside the box and make a new box for myself to create and, and do more into the field. Because mm -hmm. the crazy thing about it is we, we talked about making moves and, you know, getting a facility. Like I want to open up a mix and a mastering facility. And on top of that, do engineering school. But we wasn't going to do that for another, you know, three, four years till after like buy another house and, you know, get the family situated and then start doing more business things. So that was going to happen later down the line, you know, but good old pandemic hit and it was just the right time and the price was right. And we was just like, you know, talked to my, my nephew and my brother-in-law and we were just like, hey, nigga, let's do it. Mm. And then we hit teeth like, hey, nigga, this is what we going to do. Hey, man, let's go. Mm. And so it, it literally just pushed us into doing it sooner than later. You know, from this pandemic and COVID, you know, there were so many shows. Like, I started off where I was supposed to get ready to interview on um, people's shows and have people backstage. And that was going to be how I got my content, signing with Bobby D and Uncle Snoop. And it didn't go that route because COVID hit. 
And, you know, Snoop Dogg had tours around the world. They was doing stuff with Banda MS, and they're going to hit this whole double market and really, you know, infiltrate the whole world sound, and boom, COVID hit. Was there something that happened for you guys where you guys were supposed to go on tour, and then COVID hit, and, you know, that's where we got this building today? Nah, it, we, like I said, like, we really didn't hit too many bumps, honestly. Like, if anything, it like I said, if anything, it helped out because... It pushed a lot of artists to get their ass back in the studio because they had nothing but time and opportunity. That's real. So you have more people working on projects. So guess what? They reaching out for beats and mixing and mastering the studio time. So it it actually it helped out more than hurt. Mm. Cause it's just it's looking at the field that we in. It's not just a regular field versus, you know, someone touring and like, if I was on the road and then that shit hit, I would have been fucked up. Because the income, would, you know, like, the, the pay is amazing on the road, you know. But it's like when you strip down from that, like, you know, ain't no 401k plans in this shit. <laughs> There's no benefits, no nothing. Like, what you what you get, that's what you get. Like, ain't no backup plan. Like, that's you, you fumble it and, or something happened, like... Shit out of luck. Like there's an insurance <laughs> bond on the event, not an insurance plan for the people in the mm-hmm. event. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, like if if I was on the road touring and stuff still, and this hit, yeah, it would have been bad. Like it, it would have been real bad because I would have came back and then start trying to make up for it in the studio. Like even though I was on the road, I was still doing my studio stuff and producing all that. So it was all you know hand in hand, but. Just being that bulk of income just stripped and then just having to rely on this. And, you know, the way living is set up when you making a certain amount of money, that would have fucked me up. Mm, but mm. luckily that didn't happen. Like, man, Structure. I, I, I got out that part of the game in time and got married. So I didn't. That <laughs> 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 so, man, it, it worked out for me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Shoot, brother, you got to survive my awareness segment. You got to survive my impulse Q&A as a reward. Let's promote, you know, the floor is yours. You want to shout anybody out, you know, whatever you're trying to do, brother, you know, the floor is yours. Man, you already know, man. I, I'm a home team player, man. Shout out to the 2 old Nina. You know mm. what I'm saying? I represent for all my folks out here. So, regardless, it's all for y'all, man. It's all for the city. So, be on the lookout for all the up-and-coming artists, you know. My nigga Haiti, Jay Black, you know, free that boy MB now. <laughs> Man, hey, it's shit going on with you. Free that boy. Come uh, on. Just all, all the up and coming, you know, artists out here, producers, engineers, like, man, it's, it's our time. This is city's time to shine. Mm-hmm. Like, we do this for y'all. We do this for the city. So, you know, hallway, you know, this. Get used to the name, you know what I'm saying, baby? <laughs> but, man, yeah, shout out to this man right here, you know what I'm saying? He, he reached out, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's been a long time coming. Man, we made it happen, though. Oh, yeah, Nothing. come on, shit, we locked in, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to, you know, that he reached out to me, so. Bro, you know, this, the show is different, it's unique. They said I gotta have segments, so I added segments, but I didn't do segments like them. And I'm like, how do I keep that same energy and close out? The viewers knows it's coming. I'm going to hit you with it. You got any questions for me? Nah, man. For sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, on that note, it's Contrast Uncut. It's season four, episode 34. Man, big shout outs to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I wouldn't That's be able funny. to do incredibly shit like interview, you know, D over here, Hallway Productions, and chop it up about his history. And his brother let them diamonds shine. He let so many gems drop that you would have thought you was floating in diamonds during this interview. Let the game just flow, brother. I appreciate you coming on here, being transparent, That's being open, love, and, you know, letting the game be there for what it is to be used and to be applied to. Sometimes people got to remind yourself you got to apply yourself. Otherwise, you know, you'd be thinking about I could have this, that, or the other. You could be the brother sitting right here like, I got this, I got that, and I'm going to show you how to get it. Thank you. All time, man. One more, man. R.I.P. R.I.P. to my boy DJ Crazy Tunes. R.I.P. Champ. R.I.P. Rory. Hallway all day. Bang. What's good? D.E.E. Hallway Productions. Tuned into Contrast Uncut. Shout out to Bobby D. And Snoop Dogg. Yeah. It's really we 
remind me of some, ayy This really reminds me of some Tribe Called Quest Hip hop really taught me to give it all I got left Wu-Tang taught us how to beat the projects And tell my story over beats and it could be a project Look, how it all begun, uh, bum, skibbity bum, yeah Grew up on that Nas, on that L, on that pun Old soul when I was young, crisscross, make them jump Battle rapping for respect, my nigga, this ain't what you want Can I kick it when I'm rhyming? Be a legend through Ebonics, was a sticker boy Felt like sticky fingers played at Onyx Can I live track 8? Feel like Jigga 96 Without a reasonable doubt, the album turned me into this Should we always had dreams of being money-making mission? Without jewelry on, hit the jail pose, take a flick. Feel like pocket, keep your head up. Biggie shooting.